The anatomy of the skin. The skin is a physical barrier that protects our bodies against uh, mechanical damage, chemicals, particles, and infectious agents, as well as preventing the entry and loss of water. The skin has many physiological functions. Uh, it serves to regulate temperature, it provides sensation and nerve signaling, it is the site of uh, vitamin D synthesis, um, it also uh, offers protection against UV radiation, and it is also part of our immune defense. The skin is divided into three basic layers. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer, the dermis, which is the middle layer, and the hypodermis, or subcutaneous layer, which is the innermost layer. Um, before we go into detail about each layer, let's just talk about thick and thin skin. So, thin skin is the most abundant skin type. It lines most of the body and contains hairs and glands. Thick skin, on the other hand, line the, lines the palms of our hands and soles of our feet. Um, thick skin has no hair or sebaceous glands, so that's important to remember. Um, these types of skin uh, present some differences in their anatomical structures, uh, namely the epidermis and the dermis. So, the epidermis. The epidermis itself is generally divided into four layers. These being the basal layer, the spinous layer, the granular layer, and the cornified layer. However, in thick skin, it may contain five layers. Um, the extra layer sitting between the granular and cornified layers, and this being the stratum lucidum. The basal layer is a single cell layer that contains the stem cells of the epidermis. Uh, and these cells are cuboidal in shape. Newly formed daughter cells will either differentiate to form the layer above, which is the, the spinous layer, or remain in the basal layer as stem cells. And uh, cell division is finely controlled to maintain an equilibrium between cell lost from the surface and new cells uh, formed. The next layer is the spinous layer. It is several cells thick and the cells in this layer present keratin filaments and desmosomes, uh, which will link them to adjacent cells. Um, these differentiated cells are no longer capable of division. In the granular layer, further differentiation occurs through the production of keratohyaline granules. These granules contain proteins that bind uh, the keratin filaments together. Um, cells in this layer also produce lamellar bodies which contain lipids important for the hydrophobic barrier to water. The next layer is the stratum lucidum, which is only present in thick skin. This is a thin, clear layer of dead skin cells, uh, which is named for its translucent appearance under a microscope. The function of this layer is just to offer extra protection in areas uh, most common to damage. The last layer is the cornified layer. Um, in this layer, cells lose their nuclei and organelles to form the tough surface layer of skin. Uh, eventually, the dead cells fall apart and are shed. Now let's talk about some of the cells that are important um, in the epidermis. So the most abundant cells in the epidermis are keratinocytes. These are the cells that produce keratin and the degree of keratin production increases with increasing differentiation. Um, these are the cells that undergo a continuous process of production and shedding. Uh, next up is uh, melanocytes. Uh, these are responsible for skin pigmentation and protection against UV radiation. These cells are dendritic in shape and reside in the lower layers of the epidermis, um, where they synthesize melanin. Melanin is packaged into melanosomes and transferred into neighboring keratinocytes. Langerhan cells are the antigen-presenting cells of the epidermis. They are important for the defense against surface pathogens, and they may present the antigens to lymphocytes in the skin, or they may also migrate to lymph nodes. 
So the last cells that we will talk about in the epidermis are Merkel cells. These are specialized cells that reside in the basal layer in association with nerve fibers. And they are responsible for uh, fine touch sensation. So now let's move on to the next layer of skin, uh, this being the dermis. So where the dermis starts and the epidermis ends, we have the epidermal dermal junction. This has a wave-like appearance and these waves are uh, more prominent in thick skin. This is to allow a greater attachment between the epidermis and the dermis uh, so the layers won't detach and to allow a better blood supply to the epidermis. So remember that there are no blood vessels in the epidermis so the blood must uh, travel from the dermis. The dermis is divided into two. Um, the papillary dermis, which is a thin layer underlying the epidermis, and it is composed of relatively loose connective tissue uh, made up of collagen fibers and elastin fibers. This layer contains an extensive capillary network, uh, lymphatics, and nerve endings. And then we have the reticular dermis, which is a thick layer that makes up most of the skin overall. It is composed of dense, irregular connective tissue containing thick bundles of collagen fibers. This layer contains fibroblasts, which are cells that synthesize collagen and elastin, and immune cells such as mast cells, macrophages, and lymphocytes. It also contains various vessels, nerves, and nerve endings. Lastly, the reticular dermis is the site of various skin appendages like hair follicles, um, sweat, and sebaceous glands. Uh, we then have the hypodermis. Um, the hypodermis is the deepest layer of skin, and it is composed of mature adipose tissue. It functions as an insulator, protector, and as an energy storage. The thickness of the hypodermis will vary between individuals and places of the body. Um, this is the end of the video. I hope you learned something new. Uh, please leave a like and subscribe.